Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the 11th video in the Ethernet series, and today we will see how to use the HTTP server with Ajax. The video was going to be very long and therefore we will cover it in two different parts. This part will only include the basic understanding of what exactly we are going to use, also we will try sending an empty request to the server, and the server should perform some operation on receiving the request. In the next video, we will update a specific part of the web page, by receiving the data from the server, and this whole operation will be done without loading the page again. As this is the continuation from the previous HTTP server video, I would advise that you watch that video first. In order to use Ajax, we use the XML HTTP request object. You can find more info about it in the Mozilla documentation, I will leave the link in the description. As mentioned here, the object is used to retrieve data from a URL, without doing the full page refresh. IAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, and it uses a number of technologies, especially the XML HTTP request. We will see how to implement it as we proceed with the video. This is the project from my previous video about the HTTP server, and I am going to continue with the same. Let's open the project in Cube IDE. Here is the HTTP server file, which we will modify in a while. The most important part of this tutorial, is the HTML files we use. To make it a bit more interesting, I have decided to use a larger web page with images and more syntax. As I am too lazy to make it from scratch, I decided to use one from the SD's examples. This is an example on the Netcon HTTP web server, provided by the ST. Here we are only interested in this FS folder. The home page looks like this, and this is good enough for the experiment. This is the 404 error page. We will modify the home page and add some buttons to it, which will be used to send an empty request to the server. Let's create some buttons first. I am going to use an online HTML editor to create the button. These look nice with the hover actions. Let me delete all this stuff from here. First we will create an onload event, which will basically call the onload function, once the entire page is loaded. Now we need to create this onload function, and it must be defined under the script tag in the head. You can use JavaScript for larger code, but since I am using something very basic, I am writing the code here itself. First we will define a variable to store the XML HTTP request. Now we will define the onload function, in which we will create a new XML HTTP request. The buttons we created, we must use the click functionality to them, so when the green button is clicked, we will call the function, green, which we will define in a while. Similarly when the blue button is pressed, it will call the function, blue. We will define these functions inside our script tag again. So when the green button is pressed, we will initialize the XHR request. The open method is used to initialize a new request, or reinitialize an existing request. Here is the syntax for the same. The parameters are the request method, the URL, and the third one is optional. Here we will use the get method, the URL will be button color equals to G, 
and just put true in the last parameter. After initializing the request, we will send it to the server, with no parameters at all. This is not actually a request for data, but rather a test to see if the server is able to receive it. We will do the same for the blue button. Close the script tag after everything is finished. I am not good with HTML, or JavaScript, so if I am missing some functions, or if you think using JavaScript is better here, you are free to do so. Please don't spam the comment section regarding this. We will test this with our server later. Now as I mentioned that I am going to use the files from the examples provided by ST, let's copy them outside. We will rename this to index.html. Also let's rename this to the image folder, it will be easier for us to deal with it. Now you can see the images are not loading as we need to update the path to these images in the code. Let's edit this index.html file. This is the folder name, where it is looking for the images. We will change it to the img folder at all the locations in the code. Also we need to add the button code we just created. Let's copy the head section, and replace the entire head from the index file. We also need to add the onload event in the body of the file. Alright the images are loading fine now. Now comes the button part. I want to add them somewhere in the middle of the page. Let's reload this page, alright they are looking fine. You can see our script is also loading alright. We need to change the folder name in the 404 file as well. Alright we will copy them in our project folder now. So go to middleware, third party, LWIP, source, apps, HTTP, FS, and paste them here. Now we need to generate the FS data file again, so double click this make FS data application. Alright let's build the code once. We have added a few images in the web page so we need to add the functions to serve those images. If you notice in the web server file, our code is only looking for the index.html file, so we need to add the code for serving the image file also. If you check the HTML file again, here you can see there will be a request for the img slash sd.gif. So we will check if this request was made. And if it did, we will open the GIF from the image folder, and send this data. Similarly, there will be a request for the stm32.jpg. We will again check this request, and open the respective file, and send it.
In the 404 file, there will be another request for the logo image. All right other than the requests for these image files, remember that we are also making a request when clicking the buttons. So we will check for the URL, button color equal to. The next character will basically define whether we clicked the green, or the blue button. Whatever it is, we will store it in the color variable. We need to define this color variable, and we will check its value in the debugger. Let's build and debug the code now. Let's go to the server address, which is the same as the previous tutorial. Alright the web page is loaded successfully with the images, and the buttons. Keep an eye on the debugger window as well, where I have added the color variable. When I click the green button, the color variable has the character, G. And on clicking the blue button, it changes to B. So the buttons are working fine, and the XML HTTP request is indeed made by the client. If we try to access any other page, it will show the 404 error page instead. Let's check the Wireshark to understand the requests made by the client. We are analyzing the Ethernet requests, also I am putting a filter for HTTP requests. Let me reload the page once. Here you can see the requests, first one is the index.html, which was successful. Then it requested the GIF and JPG file, which were successful as well. When I press the buttons, the button color requests were made by the client. The page did not reload while making these requests. Which was exactly what we wanted it to do. When we open some other page, you can see the 404 page request, followed by the logo file. So far things are working fine. You can play with these buttons, like using the buttons to control the LEDs. In the next tutorial, we will actually receive some data from the server, and display it in some section on the web page. And the objective is to achieve this without reloading the web page again. Let me be clear again, I am not an expert in HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. So if you notice any mistake in the web page, please check other comments before pointing them out. We will continue with the same project in the next video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.